Marriage Shelters by Jesus podcast, and we are so excited that you're with us, you're watching, you're listening, you're hitting subscribe, you're hitting like, you're sharing with your friends, because that brings money in. If you want to help uh, get people off the street, you go to sheltersbyjesus.com. If you'd like to give, it's $9. We'll get somebody off the street. We also have four books out, written by the dumb hick from Skowigan, me. And they have two prices, $10 or free. And you put your name and address right there and, and tell if you want books one, two, three, or four, all of them, we'll mail them right out to you. You also can call the office at 207 474 8833 and give them your name and address there and they'll ship it. But the other thing you can do is get a tour. When you call that number, say, I'd like a tour, and you'll meet the residents, you'll see everything we have. And we're just excited about you being a part of this. So now, on to the podcast. All right, here we are. We're back at South Wyndham Community Church, and we have some guests with us, and we are excited. I've been speaking here at the church, and uh, they support us, and we got a couple of members of the church. I believe you're members. Yes, I'm going to be sir. careful while saying that, because because some of you showed up today to hear the, the singer. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, they uh, didn't want to hear the dumb hick from Scott Egan. Oh, no, they they showed up for you. Oh, man. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so your name's again. Melissa. Melissa. And Nick. And Nick. I hope you remember names better than I do. But I'm old, man. I'm going to be 75 here pretty soon. I got a right to do that. Mm. Uh, so I, I just want to ask you guys, what, what do you think about this whole thing? With the, What's your opinions on the homeless thing and what we're doing? What maybe needs to be done, what your church is doing, what, what's your opinions on anything you want to share about with the homeless situation? Nick's got a finger up. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think it's great that the church is really trying to get it, the word out there. It's pretty sad when the city is pretty wealthy and they got to move them along again. they got no place to go. They're on their third try. Yep. It's a shame. It, it really is because I travel the streets a lot and I see them everywhere. They're at places that there's like only two or three together, and then you go down a marginal way, there's 50 tents or whatever. It's like a half a mile yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 It, it. It's a shame that these, these are human beings. Thank it's, you. It's, That's what people are forgetting. They think they're feral animals, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. And, they're uh, human beings. But I think you hit the nail on the on the head when you said they're, they're, it's different. There's different types of situations down there that need to be handled. You know, yep. the drug situation. You know, I mean, unfortunately, there's no money to be made in drugs. Or mental health. Not with so, them. Yeah. For a period. I mean, even when you look at what Unless happening. you're buying, there ain't no money. That's right. Yeah. And, and if, if there's no money to be made, then unfortunately the government doesn't really want to step in. Right. I really think it's wonderful that you got, went to that um, Waterville encampment and that they're actually trying to work with the... And they have a place. Yes. I mean, that's really all, all anybody wants. I mean, you also said, you know, some of them, some of these people, unfortunately... Could never exist in a homeless environment. Right. They just—that's my brother. My brother is mm. is, is homeless. He's in St. Louis right now, and I got a phone call from someone who's helping him. Yeah. And it felt so good to know that someone is helping him. But this was his choice. He right. chose to be homeless. He doesn't want, you know, he, he does okay. But it's just nice when somebody steps up and says, "Hey, I'm going to give you a hand." Amen. And they help mm -hmm. him get social security disability. So he now actually. Has an income coming. Oh, in. awesome! And, yeah, and, and you know he, he wants to go someplace warmer. Yep. Um, because again, it's not easy to be homeless here in Maine. No, it's not even easy to be homeless anywhere. It ain't easy to be homed <laughs> in Maine. Yeah, in, Maine, in the winter just, time. Yep. It's just acceptable, really. And I really hope that they're fighting um, to make sure that this the encampment down Marginal Way doesn't get pushed. I mean, when they come in with bulldozers, that's just ridiculous. It is. Yes. I mean, these people have, have have struggled to get what they have and then to take it all away from they, them so they have to try to find something again. They yeah. come in with nothing and they take it below nothing. Mm -hmm. And that don't even sound reasonable. I, I, there was once podcast going, how do you get below nothing? Go to an encampment. Yeah. You'll see below nothing. Yeah. And if it's taken away, a lot of them commit suicide. Mm -hmm. you know, suicide rates are high through the homeless. And, and then one, they say, well, somebody might get mad and hurt somebody down there. Well, if I was down there, I'd be angry. Mm. I'm not sure what I'd do, but I'd be angry. I'd be scared, and yeah, I'd be yeah. upset, especially if I saw people walk by and ignore me. Oh, I stick their nose up like, you know, I'm less than they are, and I can't do nothing about it. The frustration would be unbelievable. Mm. People need to remember that they're by the grace of God. 
Oh, baby. Hey. Amen. Because, I mean, it could be you. Yep. It could be your brother, as it is with me. Yep. You don't know how it's going to cut you. So it can be a child. You know, we all get lost at one point or another. We Some do. Of us just get a little more lost than others. Yep. And I love that you, what you said about that gentleman this morning. Mm. All it took was for someone to love on him, to be kind to him, for him to want to make that change. Yes. And then when God gets involved, um, and I really think that as far as drug abuse, God's the only savior that you, you've got to have. Yep. He's yep. going to help you get through it with the least amount of withdrawal and the least amount of agony. Right. So getting into that. Yeah, you got to get to a place where you hate what you're doing. You hate life where you are. And, mm -hmm. But you need somebody to come alongside with an arm. You don't need a finger in your nose. <laughs> we got enough judges. Yes. Uh, the problem is our church is turned into a place of judgment, not a place of love. You know, you walk through that door, and most places they're looking you up, up and down, mm -hmm. and uh, they're sizing you up. You know, you got something to offer here, or you just gonna be a pain in the butt, and you know, you get something from us instead of giving. And you know, this church is like that. You know it. I, I. That's why yeah. churches can disappoint you, but God will never disappoint right. you. If you're looking for a relationship, don't look in a building. Look up. Because you don't have a chance if this isn't where your relationship is. If your relationship has to be with the building and the people in the building, it's not a relationship. Well, the hard, well, the hard part of it is, I agree with that, but I, the other thing I hear all the time, don't look at people, look at God. The problem with that is uh, you can't see him. Mm. That's true. All right? Who am I going to see? I am going to see the people in that church. Yes. I am going to see the ones that says they represent him. They're the ones that are gonna, I'm going to be confronted with. When God, God moves through them, then I see God move. It's like we go to the encampment. God, they're not going to see the personage of God, mm -hmm. but they're going to see his people. He's, he's going to show up in us. If we don't show up, he don't show up. So, yeah, they, there is that. But it's hard to keep your eyes on God when you can't see him. Right. You know, I, I can look around and I, I'm like in this church and this is a loving church and, yeah. I, and I, love, I can look around and see God working in people here. And somebody said, you know where God is? Or, yeah, he's right here. He's in these people. You know, I, I see God. Mm -hmm. What does he look like? Well, he looked like that gal back there that was praising him and uh, the young lady that uh, come running down front this morning and just dropped to her knees and throw her hands in the air and yeah. she's praising God. Uh, I saw God in her. I tell you right now, you know, and a lot of churches go, hey, hey shh, <laughs> quiet, because she was hallelujah, Holy yeah, but right. she wasn't, she wasn't putting on a show. No, her heart was torn, and mm. and she was down here just crying praises to God. Mm. You know, we that I, I see that. So how do I see God? I don't look up. I look straight ahead. You know, I hit my knees and I find God. But I look at. I look at guys like you that come in here and you got a heart for them. I see God. That's why I see God. And that's where those out there are going to see God. Nick, you had your finger up. Well, what, what you're saying too is uh, over the years, I've had a lot of, well, I've played a lot of sports. So I've got a lot of guys who say, I don't believe in God because I don't see him. I said, well, let me ask you. I said, when you get in a book and you know about Ben Franklin and Abraham Lincoln, how do you know? Well, I see the pictures. Well, you don't read the Bible and see the, all the words in the Bible and the pictures in the Bible. It just, that's how you learn. And it really frustrates me. Oh, I don't see him. Well, we don't see him, but you, you, you can learn about him and through the Bible. And uh, it's like anybody else you don't believe in. Way back, way back in the room, the wars and all that. Well, they got proof of it in the paper. But we got proof in the Bible. Read the Bible. Okay. I, I, I go through that a lot. Uh, I go with that. I love what Jesus said in John 3. Yeah. He says, Everybody says, well, I don't see the Spirit. Right. Well, you're not going to see the Spirit. He's not visible. But he says, uh, did you see the wind? The Pharisee and he goes, no. no. He said, you know, it's there. How do you know? Because the leaves blow off, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so how do I know the spirits at work through the homeless business? I go and I see their reaction to the people that go. I see them. Now, I, I shared last night in the message, uh, I had a, my phone, the cell phone, wouldn't charge, but I, I flipped it around to all kind of stuff. Well, they told me you need to blow out the whole thing you stick it in the hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I had to do? I had to buy air. Really? I bought a can of air yeah. at Walmart for $10. I never felt so dumb in my life. <laughs> yeah, I come home and wife said, what'd you buy? I said, air. 
<laughs> you bought what? I bought air. <laughs> it's in this can. Yeah, really? Boy. You paid how much for that? I paid ten dollars for the air in the can. Yeah. Oh wow. That sounds pretty stupid. I say I know, uh, but I pressed the tube and the air come out. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My phone worked. Yeah. So go. I know there was air in there. Sure. You know? And I somehow it, it, it worked. Well, how do I know the spirit of God is real and working? I, I see it. Mm. I don't see him, but I see when it moves. I see like church gets behind us. I see like like here, you got some little kids that have done great stuff for the homeless. You know, I know. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. So I look and I go, oh, that's the Holy Spirit. He's, where is he? He's right there. This kid's got him. Oh, no, that, that person over there, that, that one's got him. So, yeah, I, I look around. I, I can see the Holy Spirit. I look around. I see God. I don't look up because... I can't see him. I'll, I'll look up when I get up there. Yeah, but and uh, so yeah, and, and people have been saying that for years. Don't look at me. Look at God. Well, how can they look at God? They got, they're looking at you. What you're saying is, don't hold me to what I'm teaching you because mm -hmm. I'm going to screw up. All right, so you screw up. Well, tell them I right. screwed up. Right. All right, I'm not perfect. God is. I'm going to screw up. I'm sorry. I screwed up, but I'm going to try to do it right. But watch me try to do it right. And then in the encampments, we're trying to go down there and do something. All right. And my God, no. But I, I tell you, I carry him. Yep. He's here, man. He's here. Mm. And when I look in the eyes of those people in the encampments, I see people that don't even know they need God and they need God. And they're looking for something that you, you see this deadness, this, home, this hopelessness yep. in their eyes. But you give them a hot dog, you give them a tent, and tell them Jesus loves them. And all of a sudden, you see something that's a spark. Now, maybe the next guy going in is going to be able to do something that spark. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I have people ask me, well, you set up a church service? No, I set up a church service. Well, do you preach? No, I don't preach. Well, what do you do? I get out and give them a sandwich. What good does that do? I said, it shows them I love them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, guys were telling me about St. Francis of Sissy, and, and uh, he was speaking in one place, and, and they said, you preach the gospel. And he says, I do. And sometimes I even use words. <laughs> But does, know. don't you feel wonderful after you leave, though? Oh, you have to. Oh man, I lay my pillow, my head on that pillow at night when you left there. It's like, thank you, Lord. Mm. I tried. I feel a little guilty that I got a pillow, mm. but yeah. I feel great that I left one with them. Yeah, I you go, know, and I go through that path. Of yeah, the little things I can do around the neighborhood. I mow a lawn. These people that can't get out and do it, I feel awesome afterwards. I really you know. do. It's like, you I, know. I help them. It's, you know, I, I wish. I got to take you, let you preach to some churches and tell them how good to do, get off their butt and get out there. They might enjoy themselves. Yeah. You know, I, I know there's a football game coming on this afternoon. Oh, yeah. And I know we got to get to it. You know, I, I'm a sports fan too. But that guy in the tent don't have TV. Right. He don't have light. Don't have he. He may not even have a sandwich today mm -hmm. while you're home, you know, picking out and doing yeah, the sure. tailgate party. And I'm not knocking people for picking out and doing tailgate party. All I'm saying is, how about think about maybe take a little bit off that and just giving it to this guy. Right. It's got absolutely nothing to do. Yeah. And, and if they would look at it the way Jesus said, he said, when you did it to them, you did it to me. If you, if somebody said, that's Jesus over there, he's hungry. Every church would run out the door. Exactly. Let me get something to Jesus. I'm coming, Jesus. Hang on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Mm. I'm coming. And, but homeless is out there. It's like, ooh. Yeah. And then Jesus said, that's me. Because the Pharisees said, when did we feed you and stuff? Don't remember. You've been on this. Oh, when you did that person, you did to me. And he said, the other thing I want you to know is when you walk by that person, you walk by me. Oh, yeah. True. And we got to get that vision that the one that died for us, if we figured that he is there in that encampment, every church in America would be in an encampment for them. Mm. Every one. Yeah. They couldn't sit in a pew. They couldn't stand themselves. They got to get up and go to Jesus. I want to be what Jesus is. You know, when Jesus walked around, they all went where he was. They didn't mm -hmm. stay at the temples and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the sanctuaries. They all said, oh, he's out in the backyard. He's over on the river. Woof, that we're going. You know, that's where they went because yeah. they wanted to be there with him. And he said, well, you do it with the least of these. You're, you're with me. But we, we missed the boat mm. as the churches. We're missing the boat in America right now. Yeah. We, we need a revival, but it's going to come with seeing that there's a whole bunch of Jesuses out there. Mm -hmm. It's waiting for us to come and give them something. Because one day Jesus is going to say, how come you walk by me? Mm. 
Mm. They were going to say, I didn't walk by. Oh, yeah, you did. I was in Portland. You remember me in Portland? I was that young lady there that was just shot up and, and needed help. And I'm crying. Give me help. You just mm. walked away and looked the other way. That was me. Yeah. That was me. Yeah. You missed the boat, guys. But you're in a church that ain't missed the boat. This is a church is so supportive of my ministry. You're not, I know you're not supporting me. You're supporting the ministry of Jesus Christ. But I, I take it personal. All right? I feel like you're supporting the dumb hick from Scout Higgin. Well, we feel really good to be able to support you. We feel, you know, you've really um, lit a fire under some people here. We've got Lee going out to the encampment. Um, I told him that Nick and I would like to go out with him. Yeah. At least, you know, once or twice just to, you know, he said he needs hands, all hands on deck. That's what you need. It's just, mm. you know, he's got, he's got people making stuff, and he just needs people to hand it out. Amen. And to be with him. So God bless him. I talked with him. He's got a heart, man. Yeah. yeah. Heart. He's got a heart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, praise God. Yeah. I, I want to thank you guys for taking this time and sharing on my podcast. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been a blessing. We really appreciate you being and, here, and we appreciate you having us. Well, and I'd like you. to say, Pastor Barry, I'm so thankful I found this church. Amen. I'm glad through you her did. Through her father and her grandmother, we have been know what, 21, 22 years. Yeah. This was the church I went to when I was, when I was a little kid. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I was here before they had the downstairs and the upstairs. Really? And yeah, my dad um, was coming to church, and he said, we'd love it. Back. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he brought me back, and who would have thought? Because my dad was not—he <laughs> was the last person you would think would have brought me back yeah. to church. So <laughs> you just never know. Well, going back is interesting. The church I'm preaching in is the one I got saved in in 1977. So there you go. sometimes you just go home. That's mm. it, right? That's God always and, brings you home. Hey, and there's a lot of them out there would like to hear that message right now on the street. Some of them just want to go home. They want a yeah. home to go to. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so this has been that. great. Oh, love you love guys. I love you. And I just want to say. Uh, we've had a great time. If you want to support us, again, $9. Well, we're talking about here is what we can do with $9. Go to sheltersbyjesus.com and for $9, we can, you can make sure we take care of the ones at our shelter and help us go mobile around the country. And until the next podcast, y'all come back now here. Yeah?